welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Let me tell you, I have never met a living soul who did not claim to abhor violence, hate war, despise bigotry, and condemn cruelty. If we are not all of us liars, then why is our world ravaged by wars, infected with violence, rife with bigotry, and pockmarked everywhere by cruelty? I merely ask the question. I do not really expect an answer. Our mystery drama, The Pretend Person, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Elspeth Eric and stars Terry Keene. is horrified by the murderer, whether we should take the life of anyone who has taken a life is open to argument, but I submit that the essential reason we are so horrified by the murderer is that perhaps his dreadful deed arouses in us the dark desire to go and do likewise. And so the curtain rises on the first act of our play, The Pretend Person. Doctor, I wanted to ask you... You want to ask the doctor something? Uh, it's all right, nurse. Never mind. Oh, I'll see if he's still... Li- ah, too late, he's gone. Oh, what was it you wanted to ask him? I wanted to ask him what he did with that flashy red and green sports jacket. He never wears it anymore. <laughs> That's all you wanted to know? That's all. What a thing to ask. Anyway, the doctor seems very pleased with you. I'm very pleased with him. Mm, you should be. Maybe he and I could get something going before I leave here. You know, open-heart surgery is a very delicate operation. And he's the best. He's tops. Uh, listen, isn't it about time you went to lunch? Just about. But I can't leave you until somebody gets here. I can hear your stomach growl clear across the room. I can't leave till somebody gets here to stay with you. My father and mother will be here. Go on. Well, I'll get ready. Then I can leave as soon as they show up. I'll just remove my dignity. <laughs> Your what? Your dignity? Yeah, that's what I call my cap, my dignity. You probably noticed. I put it on first thing when I get here in the morning. When I'm through for the day, I remove it. You remove your dignity. <laughs> that's nice. <laughs> I also remove it for lunch. It makes lunch more enjoyable. Uh, your friend been here to see you lately? Who's that? What friend? Well, I've never been privileged to meet him. Or, uh... Is it a him? Is who a him? Your friend. You talk about him as if he was a him. I do. Oh, not that you talk about him much, but every so often you say, uh, my friend's coming to see me, or my friend's been here. Well, I was just wondering. Are, are we late? Oh, come in, Mother. Oh, your father's parking the car. I hope we're not late. That's all right. Uh, nurse, run along. You look divine without your dignity. How are you, anyway? Uh, anyway? Well, let me count the ways. Oh, you know what I mean. Oh, look, I, I brought you a plan. Oh, thank you, Mother. I was going to get tulips because I know they're your favorite, but then I thought, no plant will last longer, so I bought a plant. You're right. It will last longer. Hey, you can take it home with you when you go. Yes, I can do that, and I can talk to it. Um, has your husband been to see you? My husband? Hmm. Oh, yes, my husband. Yes, my husband's been to see me. Oh, that's good. I, I wonder what's keeping your father. You said he's parking the car. Oh, yes, that's right, he is. Uh, now, sweetie, is there anything you want, anything you need? I have my plant. Uh, oh, you know what I mean. I wonder if the plant speaks French now, not that I do. Uh, have you you've got enough nightgowns? I wear hospital gowns. Uh, I'm... I'm nervous about your father. He's probably driving round and round looking for a parking. There's a garage just up the block. I I know, but they're so expensive. They charge a minimum. That's all right, Mother. You run along. Oh, you... You you sure you don't mind? No, that's all right. Is it okay to leave you alone? The nurse will be right back. Well, if if, if you say so... You go wait for Daddy downstairs. I'll stand out on the street. You do that, and give him a kiss for me. Yes. 
You run along. I'll be fine, really. Uh, maybe your friend will drop by. Maybe. But you, you never want to tell me who your friend is. Nobody you know. I thought you were only supposed to see members of your family till you're better. How come your friend... My friend sneaks in. Is, is that all right? What if they find if out? They won't. Don't worry. Well, Mother, I... it's all right, really. It's all right. Now, run along. Well, okay. Uh, uh, probably your father will get down to see you tomorrow. Or the next day. Or, or the end of the week. That'll be fine. <laughs> Bye, sweetie. Bye, Mother. Take care. Oh, oh, I will. Never fear. Don't you have any fear about that? Where are you? Where are you, my friend? Your brother's on his way up. Oh, fine. Why don't you run along? I'll wait for him. I'll be all right. I'll tell you the God's honest truth. I want to get another look at him. You do? Mm. So handsome, so distinguished. He's married, girl, and his wife's pregnant. Oh, I didn't mean that. All I meant was, is that a vicuna overcoat he wears? Yes, it is. My goodness. Real vicuna? You want to get really depressed? He has two of them. Oh, you don't mean it. Would I lie to you about a thing like that? What's more, he has a fur-lined raincoat. Good grief. Oh, there he is. And look, I, I, I'm going to try and touch his overcoat. Uh, he doesn't like to be touched. I'll be careful. Oh, come right in. Thank you. Is, is that a speck of lint uh, on your coat? What? Oh, no, no, I was mistaken. <laughs> uh, see you all later. Well, how's the heart patient? Me? Oh, yes, me. Well, I'm all right. How are you? Fine. Everybody's fine. Pull up a chair. I got some news for you. I haven't had any news for a long time. Tell me. It looks like twins. Twins? Really? Yep. They took x-rays and it's almost certain it's twins. Well, you certainly hit the jackpot, didn't you? <laughs> if I'm using the right metaphor. I think we'll buy a house maybe on the island. Oh, say, that would be nice. Well, congratulations. I'm very happy for both of you. For all four of you. Seriously, though, how are you? You you look great. Seriously, I'm great. Really great. Mother and Dad been to see you, I hope. Uh, I'd have got to you sooner, but you know how it is. Business down at the plant keeps me tied up, and now with the twins, the house, you, you know how it is. Well, I don't know that I do. Uh, pretty rugged. I'll bet. But Mother and Dad, they have been here, right? As she was. He couldn't find a place to park. Oh, he found a place to park, all right. Well, not near the hospital. She got nervous about it. He found it. a place right near a bar and parked himself inside All it. All right, never mind that. So, you're going to buy a house that's marvelous. What kind of a house? A big one? Well, pretty big, yes. After all, when the twins are born, that won't be the end of it, you know. We both want children, lots of them. We want children running all over the place, and we can afford it, so... <laughs> you, my friend. I need you. Please. Please. I need my friend. I'm here. Oh. oh I knew. Oh, come sit on the bed. I know they say you shouldn't, but I want you near me. I need to talk to you, to tell you. Then talk to me. Tell me. What's been going on since the last time? Oh... I know it doesn't sound important, not to anybody but me. But... It's you we're talking about. Therefore, it's important. That's true, isn't it? Tell me about it. Well, my mother came to see me. Yes? It was very nice of her because... Nice she... of her? Well, she has so much to do at home. I mean, she has to do all her own work and there's never enough money. Never. And what with prices and all, it just gets worse all the time. But it, it was nice she found the time. Uh, of course, she didn't stay very long. Why not? Well, because you, my father couldn't find a place to park the car, and she got worried about him. Because he couldn't park the car? Well, yes. No. She got worried because she thought he'd gone into a bar and and was sitting there drinking. 
Was he? Not necessarily. Though he could have been. Do you think he was? I... Yes. Yes, I think he was. But it isn't really his fault. No? No. Because he's been very... Very depressed lately. Really? What about? It's everything. Things in general. He's always been that way. Just generally depressed. But it's been worse the last few years because, you see, my brother has been successful. Very, very successful. He's made pots and pots of money. That's nice. Yes, it's nice. It's nice for everybody except my father. My father, he accepts things now and then from my brother. Things like, oh, trips and little vacations and a new car. But you see, he doesn't get any fun or enjoyment out of any of those things because he figures he should be taking my mother to Europe and he should be buying the new car and he hates my brother doing it. He hates it that his own son got rich and successful and he never did. And I feel so sorry for him I could die. It tears my heart out. Of it. And if he wants to drink, we'll let him. You do understand, don't you? Oh, yes. And my brother's wife is going to have twins. Twins. Imagine. He's so thrilled and they're planning on having a lot more children. And I'm very happy for them, only... Only... Only? Don't you think God could have let me have a child? Just one child. Yes. But he didn't. Oh, my friend. My good friend. My dear one. My sweet one. Take me with you. Look. I'm crying. My tears are falling on your hands. I'm begging you. Let me go with you. Don't make me stay here because I can't bear it. So take me away with you, please. I can't. Not yet. And you can bear it. Have you noticed how illness alters people? How the hardiest man can change to a whimpering child. How the most fragile exhibit fortitude no one ever knew they had. How the placid become hysterical and the highly nervous can compose themselves. How the complainers may fall silent and the acceptors fill up with dread and foreboding. We'll be back shortly with Act Two. toward illness vary, and so do attitudes toward hospitals. Some check in filled with anxiety. Others seem happy to be there and confident that they'll be well tended. Still others show hostility and are suspicious of nurses and doctors alike. And some look on hospitals as a place of refuge, friendly and full of hope. But all all enter the antiseptic walls because at a particular juncture in their lives there is no other place to go. Hold on there. I'll get it. The doctor said I could. Now get... take it easy. Yes? Hello? Hello, beautiful lady. Oh, you got the wrong party. This is the nurse. Oh, oh. Well, can I talk to her? Well, uh, who should I say is calling? Tell her the big shot from Levy Looms. Levy Loom, that's my boss. Let me talk to him. You're your friend? My boss, my employer. Hi there. Hello, sweetheart. How's the girl? Well, I don't know how the girl is, but I'm feeling pretty good. You sure? How are things at the office? Without you, the pits. Oh. Uh, we miss you. That's nice. I've been calling every day, you know. I didn't know. That's very nice. This is the first day they put me through, so I figure you must be better. I am. I really am. 
call you up tomorrow. Is that all right? Sure, it's all right. Now, you take care of your heart now, because we really need you down here. I'll take care. Thanks for calling. I'll call tomorrow. Thanks very much. Oh, and the flowers were beautiful, too. I'll call tomorrow. Fine. So long. Oh, that wasn't your friend? I told you he's the man I work for. Oh, he sounded so nice. He is nice. Hey, listen, uh, while you were on the phone, I, I stepped out. They told me your father's here to see you. Oh. Well, tell him to come in. Okay. Are you sure that wasn't your friend on the phone? <laughs> I told you. Oh, will you come in, please, sir? Oh, oh thank you. I, I could sneak down the hall for a cigarette. Oh, no, don't go. He won't stay long. Oh, well, come right in, sir. Uh, thank you. Hello, Dad. Hello, sweetie. Hey, hey, you look good. Take a chair. I, I, I can't stay long. I have to get back. Well, sit down anyway. Yes, uh, all right. You smoke in here? No, it's not. Oh, oh, well, okay. I, uh, I just wanted to explain to you, sweetie, why I didn't get to see you the other day. Because darn this thing, I couldn't find a place to park the car. Mother told me she thought that was it. I went round and round the block. I tried all the side streets. I couldn't squeeze it at any place. People would double park, but I was scared to do that. So it's all right. I understand. Well, just as long as you understand. It's all right. Really. Well, how they, uh, how they treat you here? Very well. It's a good hospital. A funny thing, I never could stand hospitals. It's the whole atmosphere of the place being confined and all. It's just not my style. I, I like my freedom. <laughs> Is, uh, he meant to see you? Who? Well, your husband. Who else? Not yet. But he will. You hope? It's not so much that I hope, but he will. He sent flowers. Oh, that was very sweet of him. Now, her. Dad. Okay, okay. Well, I, you, you mind if I run along? No, I don't mind. Are you sure now? I'm sure. It's all right, really. It's just that the hospitals get me down. I no. know. It's all right, really. Well, then, if you... It's nice to meet you, Miss uh, uh, Nurse... Likewise. And you, sweetie, you take care, you hear? Don't worry, I'll be all right. And you take good care of my little girl, nurse. Don't give it a second thought. Hey, how much you cost you that, nurse? Daddy, I'm insured at the office for the whole thing. Oh, that's good. I'm relieved. Don't give it a second thought. Of course, your brother could afford to come up with plenty. Oh, please, the man I work for took out insurance for me. I am covered. Oh, well, then I, I don't have to worry, huh? <laughs> well... So long, sweetie. So long, Dad. And, uh, I'll be back one day soon. That'll be fine. <sighs> That's your father, huh? That's my father. Well... Look, um, uh, why don't you sneak out for a cigarette? Oh, no, no, I couldn't. You know you want to. <laughs> Such a terrible habit, smoking. Yeah, but you've got it. No, it's got me. So go on. I'd really like to be by myself for a while anyway. Are you sure it's all right? Please, I insist you'll be doing me a favor. Well, the buzzer's right here. Just push it and the light will go on and I'll be here quick like a rabbit. Run along. Oh, oh in case the phone rings. I can answer it. The doctor said I can answer it. Run along. But you're not allowed to make any outside calls. I won't yet. be making any. Well, maybe tomorrow the doctor will say it's okay to make outside calls, but you have to wait for the doctor's okay. Okay? Okay. Now, the buzzer's right by your hand. I'll be fine. Just one cigarette, that's all. Go, will you? I'm going, I'm going. I can't. I can't anymore. I just can't. Oh, my friend. Oh, my sweet friend, my dear one. Help me. What is it? I... I can't do it anymore. I don't love them. I only love you. You don't love them? I know that's bad. That's awful. That's terrible. But I can't. It's not bad or awful or terrible. It is to me. I know it is. I read somewhere. Some Russian writer, one of the great ones, he knew. Oh, he knew. He wrote it down. What did he write down? Can you remember? Oh, yes. I remember it very well. The greatest suffering is the inability to love. Oh, he knew all about that, that man, that great man. The greatest 
suffering is the inability to love. Oh, yes. Are you unable to love? Yes. Yes, I think so. I didn't used to be. A long time ago, I could love. I think I could love a lot. But then... I just couldn't do it anymore. All of a sudden... I couldn't. Now I only love you. Do you think you really love me? Oh, yes. Yes, I do. With you, I could be happy. You're sure? With you, there would be joy and love and light. Remember the poem? Joy and love and light and peace and certitude and help for pain. I'd have all that with you. Don't you want me? Is that it? Don't you want me either? Doesn't anybody want me? Don't you want anybody? Only you. Think again. There's no one. My mother, she's just worried about my father because he drinks too much. My father, he drinks and envies his son. My brother, he just rolls around in his money and thinks about the children he's going to have. And I have no children, and I'll never have any children. And I have to be nice to them all. Nice all the time. Why do you have to? Because. Because I do. Why? They expect me to be nice. That's the only reason? Yes. No. I expect me to be nice. And I can't be nice anymore. I can't be nice or sweet or considerate or cheerful or anything. Where's the phone? Answer it. You will come back, won't you? I'm never very far away. All right. Hello? Is that you? Yes, it's me. This is the big boss speaking. Well, two calls in one day. Why not? No reason. I just... I've been thinking over a couple of things. Look, when you come back, I think we'll cut out those trips to the mills. No sense in doing that. Well, they do take up a lot of time. They're a drag. Well, yes, they are. So we'll let somebody else do it. That'll be marvelous. Thank you. We gotta look after you. I don't know what we'd do without you. Go out of business, probably. Oh, I don't know about that. I know about it. Listen, I'll tell you something. The main reason I didn't let you talk to the buyers, I was afraid they'd find out how smart you are and steal you away from me. And that's the honest truth, so help me. You're very nice. You really are. No, oh, I... You... You crying or something? No. No, not anything. I'm just so glad you called up. I'll call you again tomorrow. Please do. Please call me. I will. Hey, are you sure you're okay? I'm okay. Talk to you tomorrow. Yes. Goodbye. <laughs> hey, didn't I hear your phone ring? Yes. Bad news? No, no, no. Was that your friend called you up? It was, uh, the man I work for. Oh. Oh, listen, you, you, your husband's here to see you. Who? Your husband. He's right outside. My husband? Oh, that's who he says he is. Uh, should I tell him to come in? No. No, I do not want him to come in. Oh, but he... You don't... You don't want to see your husband? I do not want to see my husband. I guess you don't want to see him. I'll tell him to come back tomorrow when you're feeling better, okay? Is that okay? Yeah, that, that's, that's what I'll tell him. Oh, my friend. My dear friend. Oh, my dearest friend. Besides the varying attitudes toward sickness in hospitals, there are vagaries that come over those who are gravely ill. 
Sometimes the entire personality of a seriously affected person can change and change dramatically. Sometimes the change is for the better. Sometimes, unhappily, for the worse. We'll come back presently with our concluding act. one's life in order to live a little longer, it seems to me there must be after effects which cannot be foretold. Relief is to be expected, of course, that one has survived. But in some circumstances, there must be a temptation to ask, survived for what? He's here. What? Your husband. You want to want to see him this time? Yes, all right. You can come in. It's time for me to go to lunch. Okay. And Buzz, if you need anything, huh? Uh, right in here. Hello, dear. Hello. Hey, it's really a nice room, you know. Yes, it is. Really nice. Yeah, really very nice. You want to sit down? There's a chair. Oh, yeah, all right. I, uh, I was surprised you didn't want to see me the other day. I was surprised, too. The nurse said you weren't feeling too well. The nurse has a swell sense of humor. What do you mean? Nothing. Anything. She told me privately she thought you'd been crying. Privately, I had. What about? Nothing. Anything. Yeah, you were always very emotional. That's what I told her. Not to worry. Was I always very emotional? Well, yes. Weren't you? I don't think so. Well, we won't argue about it. Everything's fine at the apartment. Oh, I'm so glad. Cleaning woman's been coming in every day. Oh, good. That's a bang-up job. Oh, she's a bang-up cleaning woman. I've been eating out. Oh? Where? No, here and there. You know. Well, how you feeling? Not bad at all, really, not bad. Think they'll be uh, letting you out soon? They haven't said. But you are feeling better. Oh, yes, much. Listen, uh, where have you been eating dinner? What kind of places? I really want to know. Oh, the any, any place that was convenient, you know. Did you get invited out a lot? Well, some. Did you enjoy that? Well, it wasn't too bad most times. I bet it wasn't. Uh, listen, you don't look too well to me. Yeah, well, I haven't prettied up yet today. No, no, you look all right. It's just that you... That I what? Well, you know... If I knew, I wouldn't ask. Where that smiling face? Where's the little jokes? Oh, they must be around somewhere. Did you look in the closet? You look like... I don't know. Like you're miffed about something. Miffed? Did you say miffed? You did say miffed. You and only you would say miffed. Well, are you? How about irked? Now, that's a good word. Or in a snit? How about that? In a pet? Have I got a grouch on? Well, have you? Yes. That'll do for starters. What about? Listen, tell me more about eating out places, being invited, the times you enjoyed it. Of course, without you... It was nothing what... right without me. You couldn't enjoy it, right? <laughs> Listen, you're not yourself today. Maybe I better come back when you're feeling... Oh, I am myself today. I am very much myself today. I never felt so much myself today as I do today. I've never seen you like this. It's very upsetting. It upsets me. So? Be upset. Sit there and be upset. Now tell me about all those dinners you ate out. Go on, tell me. Tell me about the ones you had with, uh, you know, what's her name? Why? The big blonde floozy over on 12th Street. Tell me about having dinner with her. Nah, no, come or on. Or tell me about dining with Miss Wetzis from the typist pool. Tell me about that. Look, I'm not going to sit here and oh, take Oh, yes, home. you are. You're going to sit right there. Would you care to tell me about the lady in the next apartment? 
The one whose thermostat is always breaking down and you're always fixing it? Tell me about her. Did she invite you to dinner? She could cook? Is her thermostat in good working order? Come on, tell me. I'm listening. And you're not talking. I don't know what to say. Say anything. Just say anything. I never meant for you to know about any of that. Well, you didn't marry a dummy. No, of course I didn't, but... I didn't know you knew about, uh... All that. Cheating is what you call all that. Now, hold on. Wait a minute. Just one minute here, you... I'm waiting. I want you to know that ever since you came to the hospital, even even before that, ever since we knew you had to have this thing done to your heart, this operation, this, I haven't done any of that. Not once. Why not? Seems like the ideal time. Well, it didn't seem right that I should. Not right? Before, it was right, but as soon as I had to have surgery, it wasn't right anymore? Figure that one out for me. Well, there was always a chance that you might... You know. No, I don't know. That you might not uh, come through. You mean I might die? Well, yes. People do sometimes. Right there on the table. Well, not a bad way to go, seems to me. You don't mean that. Nice, clean table. Nice, clean knife. Look, you're going to be all right. Am I? Yeah, but you said that the doctor said that and the nurse... So I'll live. But then what? You mean, then what? You'll live, that's what. Live how? Like always. You want a divorce. A divorce? A divorce from me. No, I don't want a divorce. Whatever gave you that idea? Why don't I want a divorce? Why, indeed. Oh, you... You mean because of... Uh, of that? Well, that doesn't mean I don't love you. I do. Listen. I'm weak. I know that. I'm a very weak man. You've always been a strong one. I've always depended on you to... Uh, well, you know. I don't know. What am I supposed to know? How I am. How you are. Me strong, you weak. Yeah, something like that. I see. Uh, look, I, we shouldn't be talking about this now. Gosh, if, if, I, if I thought... I'd never come if I thought... Oh, that feel terrible. I'm sorry. Are you all right? I'm all right. I didn't mean to... Uh, gee, if I'd only it's known... It's all right, really. It's all right. Oh, boy. You better go now. I'd like to be by myself. Okay. But I'll be back. And I'll call up. And I'm really sorry about... Well, you, you know... It's all everything. right. It's all right. Not all right. Nothing is all right. Everything is all wrong. Oh, my friend, I need you. My friend. I'm here. Oh, of course you are. Oh, hold me. Comfort me. Talk to me. What is it now? There's nothing left. There's no joy, no love, no light, no peace, no certitude, no... no help for pain. But there's always something. Oh, only you. Only you, if I could be with you. Then what? Peace, certitude, no more pain. You see, it's not really his fault. No. Because what he says is true. I have always been the strong one. I have been the one to hold things together, keeping everything from falling apart. He never knew how. He never learned. Nobody ever taught him. 
So I had to do it. Even if it meant pretending I had to do it. Why? If I didn't do it, things would fall apart. Yes. But they fell apart anyway, didn't they? Didn't they? Tell me. You don't need me to tell you. They did. But it was my fault. Because when they found out something was wrong with my heart, I mean, who wants a wife with a bad heart? That's no good. So you can't really blame him. You can't? Of course, even before, even before we knew about my heart and having to have the surgery. Even then. Yes. Oh. When they were cutting me open and taking out my heart and fooling with it. Why not then? Why didn't you come for me then? It would have been so easy. It wasn't time. When will it be time? When can I come and be with you? Because I tell you, I cannot stand it any longer. What is it you can't stand? The foolishness, the nothingness, the loneliness. What else? Isn't that enough? What else? The pretending. The everlasting pretending. Pretending to be well, pretending to be happy, pretending to have fun, pretending to like things, enjoy them, pretending you're alive when you know you're not. But you are alive. Not really. I'm just not dead. That's not being alive. No, it isn't. And there's nothing I can do about it. Oh, that's not true. What can I do? Tell me something I can do. There's always something you can do. Always? You think of something. I... I feel better. I don't know why, but I feel better. Could you sleep now? I think so. Did you have a good talk with your husband? We talked. Uh, anybody else been in to see you? Just my friend. Oh, was your friend here? For a little while. Oh, and I missed him again. Heck. You think I'll ever get to meet him? Probably not. You, you mean he's not coming back? Not for a while. Not for quite a long while. Who's coming to see you today? I don't know. Nobody called up? Not yet. Uh, hand me the phone, will you, nurse? Oh, you're going to make a call? Yeah, I'll get you an outside line. The doctor says it's all right. <laughs> Here's the phone. Well, I must say, you're looking chipper today. I am? <laughs> must have had a good night's sleep. Actually, I did. No medication, either. Yeah? Hello? Oh, it's you. I didn't expect you to answer the phone. Oh, the girl's not in yet. You know how she is. Yes, I know. I was going to call you, but I figured it was too early. I thought I'd wait. Listen, how are you? What's the medical report? It's very good. The doctor said I could make an outside call, so here I am. You called me your first call, and you called me? That's right. How about that? Look, you must be coming right along. I am, right along. Will you be back to work soon? I, I, I'm not rushing you, you understand, only... Well, we miss you. We, we really miss you, and we need you. Need you a lot. That's nice to hear. What's more, I... I miss you, and I need you a lot. That's even nicer. Yeah. Well, I... I just thought I'd say that. Uh, listen... The doctor says I can have visitors now, uh, besides the family. You can? That's what he says. I thought... I th I'll, I'll get up there right away. Visiting hours start at noon. Noon. Okay. I'll be there. Good. See you then. 
I must say, you look wonderful. Just think what you've been through. I don't know if you know it, but you were between life and death there for a while. Could have gone either way. I know. (laughs) Now it looks like you're going to go on living for a good long time. (laughs) Maybe. Yes, it does look that way. Doesn't it? professed such love and longing was death. A kindly friend indeed who would not accept her love or satisfy her longing till she had exhausted every possibility of life. A good friend. The best sort of friend anyone could hope to have. I'll be back shortly. of your laughter is forced. How much of your enjoyment is feigned? How much affection do you exhibit that is simulated? How much sympathy do you extend that is sham? The problem of life, it seems to me, probably the problem that is never quite solved lies in ceasing to be a pretend person and becoming a real one. Our cast included Terry Keene, Bryna Rayburn, Ian Martin, and Robert Dryden. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant... Dreams. Union and the mine construction industry Monday night reached agreement on a new contract to cover some 10,000 construction workers at the nation's coal mines. This is Doug Poling reporting on the CBS radio network. Picketing by mine construction workers prevented some coal miners from returning to work Monday following their own three and a half month strike. The miners honored the construction workers' picket lines in various parts of the country. The construction workers build shafts and above ground facilities at the coal mines. Although the contract must now be ratified, union officials say they will urge the construction men to lift their picket lines immediately so the miners can go back to work in force and relieve the pressure on the coal starved East and Midwest. More news in a moment. I'm Charles Osgood, CBS News. Join me on Newsbreak. Mornings on most of these CBS radio network stations as we explore this curious world of ours. Some days, I'll pick a major news story to explore in further detail. Other days, it may be a person who did not exactly make the headlines, but whose story is noteworthy in the course of human events. Newsbreak, one of the many broadcasts of news and commentary, along with hourly CBS News, updates to the minute on most of these CBS radio network stations. President Carter on Monday offered a multi-billion dollar plan to help rejuvenate the nation's urban areas. The plan includes the creation of a national development bank, several programs to make more jobs, and increased direct federal aid to cities and states. Some big city mayors said the plan does not offer enough money to be effective. But Republicans, like Senator Howard Baker of Tennessee, prefer another approach altogether. I think the better approach is to try to set up programs and techniques that will encourage industry to rejuvenate the cities through private enterprise. And in some cases, there may have to be some federal assistance, either in credit guarantees or direct involvement to avoid catastrophic 
temporary consequences, but mostly the only way we're going to improve a lot of our cities is to do it the way we've always done it. That is, with private initiative and individual effort. Speaker also said reducing income taxes could do a lot to stimulate the economy and thus help urban areas. U.N. Secretary General Kurt Waldheim issued a statement Monday saying he's seriously concerned about a number of firing incidents in southern Lebanon where U.N. troops are trying to help make a ceasefire hold. Israeli troops declared the ceasefire last week after their invasion to drive out Palestinian guerrillas. U.N. forces are engaged in delicate operations in the region. Liz Fulton has a report from Beirut. The French made two inroads into what the Israelis call Feta land, Feta being the military arm of the PLO. The French took up two checkpoints, one south of Tyre and one north, but the UN forces backed down from taking the Latani River Bridge on the coastal road. The French engaged in discussions with the Tyre Revolutionary Council, made up of Palestinians and leftist Lebanese, but the council said no bridge, in effect saying that's our territory. The PLO says it will continue to use its guerrilla tactics on Israeli troops until they withdraw from southern Lebanon. The Israelis, meanwhile, appear reluctant to pull out until the United Nations shows the strength to hold the so-called security belt. Some Lebanese government officials express privately their fears that Israel may not get out of southern Lebanon at all. Liz Fulton for CBS News. Beirut. On the Tokyo foreign exchange market Tuesday morning, dealers said the Bank of Japan bought an estimated $500 million to support the ailing U.S. dollar after it fell to another record low. In St. Louis, Jack Gibbons scored a career-high 41 points Monday night to lead the Kentucky Wildcats to the NCAA basketball championship. Kentucky won the title with a 94-88 to victory over Duke. Now this... Starting next Monday, the House Ethics Committee is going to question Tongson Park in three days of public hearings. Earlier this month, the ethics panel took secret testimony from the South Korean businessman about his alleged influence buying among congressmen. Park also testified in secret before the Senate Ethics Committee. Senator Radley Stevenson of Illinois, the panel chairman, called Park's testimony a seamy story of high living, wheeling and dealing, and influence peddling. This is Doug Poling, CBS News.